Kate Bush is one of the most celebrated singer-songwriters of all time, having come to prominence as a teenager in the late 1970s with her number one retelling of Wuthering Heights. Throughout the 1980s, Kate Bush cemented herself as a hugely talented musician and a true one-off. Let's find out what was the untold life story of Kate Bush, which singer was outside the stage and how became known. Kate Bush was born on July 30th, 1958. In 2023, she celebrated her 65th birthday. She was born in Bexley Heath, Kent, to an English doctor, general practitioner Robert Bush, and Hannah, Nay Daly, an Irish staff nurse. Kate grew up in a former farmhouse in the London suburb of East Wickham, Welling, with her older brothers, John and Patty. Kate's mother was an amateur traditional Irish dancer, her father was an amateur pianist, Patty was a musical instrument maker, and John was a poet and photographer. Dear viewer, I am just starting out on YouTube and I need your help. Click the subscribe button in the bottom right corner of the screen and help me get 1,000 subscribers by the end of the month. Thanks in advance. Bush trained at Goldsmiths College Karate Club, where her brother John was a karate ka. There, she became known as E. 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 because of her squeaky ki. Her family's musical influence inspired Bush to teach herself the piano at the age of 11. She also played the organ in a barn behind her parents' house and studied the violin. She soon began composing songs, eventually adding her own lyrics. Bush attended St. Joseph's Convent Grammar School, a Catholic girls' school in nearby Abbey Wood, which, in 1975, after she had left, became part of St. Mary's and St. Joseph's School in Sidcup. During this time, her family produced a demo tape with over 50 of her compositions, which was turned down by record labels. Pink Floyd guitarist David Gilmour received the demo from Ricky Hopper, a mutual friend of Gilmour and the Bush family. Impressed, Gilmour helped the 16-year-old Bush record a more professional demo tape. Three tracks in total were recorded and paid for by Gilmour. The tape was produced by Gilmour's friend Andrew Powell, who went on to produce Bush's first two albums, and sound engineer Jeff Emmerich, who had worked with the Beatles. The tape was sent to EMI executive Terry Slater, who signed her. Kate Bush's first single was the dramatic ballad Wuthering Heights. Written at the tender age of 18, it was composed in March 1977 and then released a year later in 1978. It made her the first woman in British chart history to reach number one with a self-pinned track. Many people assume Bush wrote the song after reading the book by Emily Bronte. This was not the case, as she took inspiration from the television adaptation. Created by the British Broadcasting Corporation, it was on screens in 1978. Only after watching this did Bush write the song, then finish off the novel. Although its high keening vocals, florid instrumentation, and literary affectations were out of step with the punk rock that was then fashionable in Britain, the song became an unexpected number one hit there and elsewhere and boosted sales of Bush's debut album, The Kick Inside, which featured similarly ornate and romantic fare. She quickly capitalized on her early success with another album, Lionheart, after which she embarked on a European tour. The performance schedule exhausted Bush, however, and she subsequently focused primarily on recording. Bush returned in 1980 with Never Forever, which produced such hits as Babushka and was praised for its musical sophistication. On The Dreaming, the first album she produced entirely on her own, she employed new synthesizer technology to create densely layered arrangements for songs that explored such subjects as the life of Harry Houdini and the plight of Australian Aborigines. The album sold only modestly, however. Bush then reached a critical and commercial apex with The Lush Hounds of Love. Its moody otherworldly single running up that hill even provided a breakthrough for Bush in the United States, although her following there ultimately remained limited. The greatest hits collection The Whole Story and the single Don't Give Up, a duet with Peter Gabriel, further increased her popularity. Little is known about Kate Bush's marriage, as she prefers to keep a private life. She is thought to have married fellow musician Danny McIntosh back in 1992. Danny was a guitarist with the bands Bandit and The Quick, and also played guitar on albums by Dollar, Denise Williams, and Ami Stewart in the 1980s. In 1993, he played guitar on Kate Song's Rubber Band Girl, The Red Shoes, Constellation of the Heart, Top of the City, The Song of Solomon, and Lily. Macintosh also played guitar on the songs An Architect's Dream, How to Be Invisible, King of the Mountain, Nocturne, Pie, Sunset, 50 Words for Snow, Misty, Snowed in at Wheeler Street, Snowflake, and Wild Man. 
Kate Bush and husband Danny McIntosh welcomed their only child, Albert, in 1998. He is now age 21. Also known as Bertie, her son is also a musician and featured prominently in the Before the Dawn concert series in 2014. In 2018, a re-release of her album Ariel Saw Bertie replaced Rolf Harris on vocals on a couple of tracks, including The Painter's Inc. Bush also dedicated the song Bertie to him and has also credited him for encouraging her to play live again. To this day, Kate Bush's fans flock to her concerts in droves, and one of her hits, Running Up That Hill, has found new life thanks to the TV series Stranger Things. Such was the untold story of Kate Bush. If you like to be sure to subscribe to the channel, and also write in the comments your favorite Kate Bush song. See you later, friends.